So if you've been following my life lately, you know that I have not been happy with my teeth for quite some time. And the reason I'm not happy with my teeth is because when I was a little girl, my sister and I both suffered from major tetracycline staining, which is a yellow-gray staining in the tooth itself that came from taking antibiotics as kids because that was the preferred method of treatment for your average sore throat and ear infection when we were kids. So we took tetracycline, and lo and behold, when our teeth grew, they were pretty discolored and ugly. About 22 or 23 years ago, my wonderful cousin, my husband, husband's cousin, who's my dad's age, was a dentist in New York City. They were just coming out with porcelain laminates then. And he said, Lisa, let's try it on you because God knows you've got ugly teeth. And I said, you're right, buddy, I do. So he put six porcelain laminates on my teeth, which are now 23 years old. And they are what they call crazed a little bit. In other words, they have sort of infinitesimal little cracks. There's a little gum recession that has come with age. And basically, there is the discoloring that comes with the fact that they're 23 years old. And the methods they used 23 years ago are not the same as now in terms of brightening and and making it so pretty. So I have been interviewing around many, many different dentists for quality, for price, for everything. Because, number one, I'm an impossible patient. Pretty much anybody who touches my mouth ends up, I end up in the root canal, man. I mean, I love my root canal doctor, but nevertheless, I could not see him for a few years. It wouldn't kill me. And I like gentle hands, a fair price, and a good artistry. You know, for cosmetic dentistry, you have to have wonderful craftsmanship, but you also have to have the aesthetic I because it is it's an artistic endeavor to create somebody's smile so through my sister I met the son of one of her dear friends his name is Dr. Mark Lazar he's going to come on the show he's agreed to be a regular sponsor you'll be hearing a lot of great commercials for him I will be endorsing him wholeheartedly and he has the most popular dental app that's been created yet and we're putting the link up on Facebook so you can see it he has an app for dentists all about all about dental work anyway Here's the thing. I've been schlepping into Manhattan at 6.30 in the morning pretty continuously for the last month, notwithstanding all these snow and sleet days, in order to have this process done. Because before you could have the cosmetic work done, you have to have your fillings that were silver taken out and be made a nicer color. Because I don't know if you know, but silver fillings cast a gray pall over your teeth. And the doctor said, if I'm going to do this for you, Lisa, I want to do this right. So we need to change the fillings out of your mouth, too. And some of my fillings are 40 years old. Anyway, the point is, when you disturb teeth that are not bothering you, you always take a chance that something bad will happen. So I'm happy to say that so far, knock, knock, Kena Hara, I don't want to give myself the evil eye here. So far, so good. Very gentle hands. Wonderful. If I tell you I discovered this doctor, first of all, he's done two fellowships in dentistry after dental school, and he's on his way to getting a master's in dentistry this summer, which I had never heard of. It means 1,600 hours extra of classes past dental school in order to get this master's. He's written all these papers. He's considered one of the best cosmetic dentists in the country. So he's like a scholar. He's an academic scholar with good hands. So I'm in really good shape. It's Mark Lazar, and he spells it L-A-Z-A-R-E. And he has offices in Manhattan, and he has offices in Great Neck. Anyway. And I want you to go to him because I highly recommend him. It's true. This is an extended commercial. But I'm getting to my point. I'm getting to my point. So this morning, was it not a gross, sleety, snowy morning? Am I right? Was it the kind of morning that you wanted to take your little Prius, which slips and slides all over the road, and park at the train station and not know what kind of day it was going to be when you got back off the train? Well, I get back off the train this morning at 107, right? I made the 1207. I got back in at 110. And you will not believe what I saw. You will not believe it. My husband was scraping the ice off my Prius. And he was waiting for me there to clean my car off to tell me that he had delivered all the stuff I needed for my show because I take a separate bag to go to the show with my microphones and my MacBook Pro and all that stuff. He had all the equipment waiting for me. He wanted to make sure that I could pull out of the space because it was a sleety, icy situation. And he wanted to take good care of me. And I came off the train. And Bill was de-icing my car. The engine had been started. Everything was defrosted. And he was taking all the ice off the windows. Can I tell you? You know, I felt really loved and cared for. And, And I really have to say this on the air. Because really and truly, 
Could there be a better present that somebody could give for you than letting you know they care about you and coming out on a miserable day to make sure that your car doesn't have ice on it and you can start and get on your way? I really think that my husband deserves a lot of kudos for this. I really do. And God knows, honey, you know I give you a hard time 23 out of 24 hours a day. But I must say, I'm very happy to have this microphone to tell the world what a thoughtful, wonderful guy you were today. Really. So that's my happy Valentine's Day back to my husband. But he doesn't have to even give me a box of chocolate. Because I don't really think that there's anything else that you could do for somebody other than show up and say, I care about you. I don't want you to go into a freezing car. And I want you to be okay. Don't you think that was sweet? I mean, I could make a crack about he should be working, <laughs> but I won't <laughs> because he's working all the time because he's connected to his Crackberry Blackberry at all times. And that's the way people work today. He doesn't need to be sitting in an office. But anyway, and I'm sure honey is not even listening. That is 100 percent true. 100 percent true. But but you don't have to play the song. But anyway, in case I re-record this, in case you're mad at me, I can put this back on the air. Hey, do you want to call and tell me of a sweet story that either you did for somebody or somebody did for you? We can do that. Oh, let's get Bradley on. Oh, Bradley? Go ahead, Bradley. Hi, Lisa. Hi, you have a story for me? Yes. Uh, kudos to your husband, absolutely. I, uh, I live in White Plains, and uh, I work in Stanford. My wife, who's five months pregnant, works in Greenwich, and... Uh, this morning I told her that I was taking her to work this morning so that she wouldn't have to drive in this unsafe conditions. And uh, also, I got off work, went back to Greenwich, picked her up, took her back to White Plains, and now I'm back in Darien to work my night job. You know what, Bradley? You're a good husband. And you know what? I'm giving you the tickets. I'm, I'm just giving you the tickets. That's it. I'm giving you the tickets for being such a wonderful husband. How about taking your wife to the theater on us? Ah, uh, that would be absolutely wonderful. She loves the theater. Okay, so this is Love Loss and What I Wore. I warn you, it's a largely female audience. So if you want to give it to her as a present to go with her mother, that's okay, too. But I'm sure that you'll enjoy it. It's a lovely off-Broadway show. Jamie Kelsey, our producer, is going to get on the phone with you as soon as we finish up here. And she'll tell you exactly, you know, what's what and how to get the tickets. I have to tell you, Bradley, you sound like you're going to be a wonderful daddy, too. I can't wait. I can't wait. We're having a daughter, my first child, and uh, we're just tickled. Well, I'm really happy for your wife and your daughter, and you're bringing a smile and a tear to my eye. It's, it's very wonderful to be so solicitous of your bride, especially when she's pregnant, because, you know, when you're pregnant, you're very distracted, and also at five months, she could be starting to show, which means her body, her equilibrium isn't the same. And, yeah. so, and I know I took a big fall at seven months in the ice, and I, and I hit my knee badly to protect my belly, but let me tell you something. It's, it's treacherous in the winter, so, so so stay, so stay away from those high heels. Tell her to be really careful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We were, she wears her Uggs everywhere. Okay. Good enough. Bradley, thanks so much for the call.